Now we're going to draw a nut and bolt holding two plates together, but the two plates have been cut through. So you can see here I've already included the hole that you'd be able to see when those plates are cut through. And that hole, of course, is the size of the shaft that of my bolt that's going to go in. I'm going to use the center line again that I've got over there to go and start my circle up here to go and construct the top view of my bolt to project it and use it to go and construct the head of my bolt and then after that I'm going to stop and show you what's got to then happen with the nut at the bottom over here. Okay, the head of our bolt is done using that top view that we drew and now we're going to use that same top view to go and project down and we're going to go and draw our nut in here at the bottom and then I'm going to stop again and show you exactly what's now going to happen with the end of your bolt and the thread that you'll be able to see on the inside of the sectional view over here. Okay, now we have our bolt on and now because we can see the inside of this hole over here and we can see the actual shaft of the bolt, we are actually going to see some of the thread that would be left on the inside of this hole once our nut has been screwed on. So for this bolt, the full length of my bolt of course is from the top of my bolt here down to this construction line I've drawn there, that is my bolt length. My thread length is going to be 50 millimeters from the edge of my bolt here upwards. So I'm just going to go and mark my thread length first so that you can see where that is. Okay. So my thread length, because it's 50, I've been told it's 50 millimeters. My thread length actually goes up into this hole over here. So my thread is meant to end on that little construction line that I've drawn over there. And because this is a sectional view, I'll be able to see that little bit of thread that is on the inside there. So I'm going to go and mark off my thread size, which is my 0.1 times my M value. I'm going to mark that off on both sides here. And then you'll see that I'm going to draw in my thread up until that line that I've just marked off. That was the end of my, the end of my thread. It's where my thread length was meant to end, over there. And then, of course, I would still see my line going across here. And then I would still have to go and put in these 60 degree lines to show that my thread tapers off like that now it's very very important that you remember that when you're doing a sectional view like this that we see this inside detail still of our bolt so we will draw in that thread over there but we do not draw in the thread over our nut over here Okay, our nut, we don't, we don't cut this nut at all, so we don't draw any thread going through the nut. We do, however, draw the thread that comes out on the other side over here. So, we'll go and we'll finish off our bolt by going and drawing the end of the bolt in. We'll draw the end of the bolt in, and we'll also include the end of the thread which I'll do for you quickly and then we'll come back to the part where we need to just finish off a few last touches now you can see that my thread goes into the hole over here up until where my thread length ended which of course is measured from the end of my bolt upwards like that and then we of course show this part of the thread which sticks out on the other side of the bolt and then 
The last thing that we have to go and add in, you'll see that I've put it here in my top view. We always put center lines into the top view of our bolt, even if it's drawn as an auxiliary view. And then we also put in center lines that go right through the middle of our bolt, since our bolt is a cylinder. We must go and add in a center line here to indicate the center of our bolt. Once we've done that, then our bolt detail is complete. But remember that this is a sectional view and no sectional view is complete without the 45 degree lines that are needed to indicate our hatching. Now, what's important here is that you see that we've got two different pieces of metal which are held together by this one bolt. So when we hatch, you'll see that we'll hatch this piece of metal, that top plate, in one direction. And when we go and hatch this big piece of metal over here, we're going to hatch that in the opposite direction to the top piece. This is an important rule that we always follow, which makes sure that we can see clearly that these two pieces of metal, these two metal plates, are actually different parts and not the same part. So you'll be able to see there my hatching knob. Both lots of lines are at a 45 degree angle, but this lot of hatching goes in the one direction, this lot in the other, because these two metal plates over here are two separate parts. I'm just going to finish off that hatching, and then once that hatching is done, then your drawing is complete.